Hi, this is Rui Neves Silva. Welcome to Control Theory. Today's lesson is about the black box. We refer to the black box approach when we have a block representing the system and we are not interested on what is inside that block. This is exactly what the transfer function is. We just know the direct relationship from the input to the output without caring about other internal signals. As we saw in the previous session, we can represent the transfer function relationship with the input-output signals from three equivalent perspectives. The first tells us that the transfer function can be obtained from dividing the Laplace transforms of the output y by the input u. Reverting the equality, you can get the input to the output from the transfer function. And finally, if you know the transfer function of the system and the input signal, you can multiply both to compute the output of the system. So the first question is, starting from the definition of the system in the time domain, and this arises from getting a linear differential equation representing the dynamic behavior of the system, we apply the Laplace transform to both sides of the equation and we can get the transfer function by direct inspection. The coefficients associated with the input of the differential equation go on top of the transfer function in the numerator and the coefficients associated with the output on the differential equation go on the denominator of the transfer function. So just to emphasize this aspect, the transfer function of a system is the relation between the two Laplace transforms of the output and the input of that system. The time t is no longer here. Ok, so now we have the transfer function. What can we do? Can we squeeze it? Yes, we can. And the first thing we will get from it are the poles and the zeros. You will be breathing poles and zeros by the end of this semester, I promise you. The poles are the roots of the denominator polynomial. And the zeros are the roots of the numerator polynomial. And these poles and zeros live in the complex plane. They can have both real and imaginary parts. Let's take a look at the poles. The poles represent how the system behaves without any external excitation. They represent the intrinsic characteristic of the system. For instance, its stability is directly related with the location of the poles in the complex plane. I take this chance to introduce the concept of autonomous system as one that does not have any external excitation. The behavior of this system depends only on the coefficients a1 to an associated with the output y. The coefficients that go on the denominator polynomial of the transfer function and defining the location of the poles. On the other side we have the zeros that describe how the system is affected by the external excitation, the outside world. Thus, the coefficients b0 to bm associated with the input at the differential equation define how the input penetrates on the system. And these are the coefficients of the numerator polynomial of the transfer function that provides the zeros. So what we have here, the minute we get the poles and the zeros, we have like a system footprint from where we can identify its dynamic behavior. The pole zero map is a representation on the complex plane of the poles and the zeros of the transfer function. And after a few weeks, you will be able to look at this map and immediately conclude about its stability, how fast it is, how oscillatory, and so on. And we can start by the stability, which is a basic requirement. We will define on the pole zero map where is the limit border of the stability? The 
the system is stable if all poles are located to the left of the imaginary axis. If we have just one pole located on the right half plane, the system is not stable. This includes the imaginary axis itself. This definition is a definition of asymptotic stability, and it's the only definition we will be using in this first course. At this point, it's important to call your, your social responsibility as engineers. Is lacking stability just a minor problem of having bad poles? Not exactly. Please be aware that lacking stability results in this or this, or this, or ultimately this. Social responsibility engineering means to do an honest work not putting at risk the safety of people or infrastructures. You will have to make decisions, so do them wisely. Opening a new section on today's session, there is this saying, how to eat an elephant? And the answer is, you just take one bite at a time. Imagine that you were at a power plant for the production of electricity and you were contracted to develop some controllers. How do we get from such a schematic towards the transfer function? Exactly. We break it down and take one byte at a time. We will model parts of the plant and use the schematic to relate these blocks. And the result will be a diagram like this. This is called a block diagram and this is just an example. And now, how can I manage these blocks to get the transfer function I need to analyze the plant behavior? Let us introduce the basic operation of blocks algebra. First case, when we have two blocks in series, where the output of the first is the input of the second, we can replace this series by its equivalent, where the resulting transfer function is the product of the two transfer functions. I leave the demonstration as an exercise to you. The next case requires the definition of the sum block, which output is the sum of the input signals. By omission, these signals are summed positively, so we do not need to represent the plus sign on it. If we have a negative input, we put a negative sign besides the corresponding arrow. Now we can find the equivalent of the parallel of two blocks. In a parallel, we have two blocks being excited by the same input and the output resulting from the sum of the outputs at each block. The equivalent block, GS, is obtained from the sum of the two transfer functions. The next case is called the feedback structure because the output of G1 feeds the input of G2 but then the output of G2 fits the input of G1 in a feedback loop. The equivalent is given by this. G1 does, goes on top because it is on the direct action path and then we have 1 minus G1 G2 on the denominator. Because of stability, it will be more common to see negative feedback. And in that case, the expression changes to 1 plus G1, G2 on the denominator. Let us now see what happens if we have a derivation point to jump to the front of the block. This is the equivalent. And if we want a derivation point to jump back, this will be the equivalent. The overall idea is that the signals before and after the transformation, they remain unchanged. And this is easy to check. Now the same 
for the sum points, if we want to put the sum point forward, this is the, qu the equivalent. And if we want to put the sum point backward, this is the equivalent. And again, you have to be sure that the signals before and after remain the same. So let us see an example. When we approach such a problem, we want to find things that we can simplify. Simplify here means replacing, for instance, a series by its equivalent. If we look at G1 and G2, we notice that these two blocks are in series. So we can replace these two blocks by just one, G2, G1. Now going further, we see that GA, which means G2 times G1, is in parallel with G3, even taking into consideration the minus sign there. So we can replace two blocks by its parallel equivalent, which gives G2, G1 minus G3. And now this result is in series with G4. So identifying this series, we can then replace and compute GC as the product of the previous value with G4. Finally, we can see that now we have a feedback loop with G5 in the feedback path and so the final result using the formula will be G2, G1 minus G3 times G4 on top and then on the denominator 1 plus plus because we had negative feedback, 1 plus G2, G1 minus G3 times G4 times G5. In the practical sessions we will do more examples such as these. And this is all for today. Send me your feedback on this video, press like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get the rest of the story. Thank you and bye bye.